square and welcome to my dining room. It's not mine, and my, it's my parents. Anyway, let's not get into this. Hi, I'm Gloria, and I'm, I did another swimming project for some reason during the semester. Um, <laughs> sewing is not an easy process. It is a process that is, at the same time, frustrating and rewarding. I decided to film the whole process of me trying to make a crew neck from scratch without a pattern again and ooh, I just love ruining my weekends honestly. Um, so if you're interested in seeing me sweat, in seeing me almost cry, in seeing me making a crew neck kind of from scratch, then keep watching. So I had already cut out all the pieces from the last video because if you don't know this is actually the second part of me trying to make a whole loungewear set so the first part is already on my channel you can go watch it if you want to it's pretty good I think and so yeah so I had already pre-cut the pieces so it made the process slightly easier for me and essentially what I had used as a base was this top right here. Um, it's a crew neck that I like the fit of, however, the big mistake that I made and I also made in the first video is that I used 2 inches of seam allowance, which if you know anything about sewing is just way too much, <laughs> obviously, and so I had to readjust all throughout the process of trying to make it a little more cinched in, just trying to adjust it, but not too much because I still wanted it to be baggy, but not 4 inches wider than it needs to be baggy, and yeah. For this process, I used a zigzag stitch. I remember this time to use a zigzag stitch. And I used white thread because that's just what I had around, which worked fine with the kind of light colored material. I also used the ballpoint needle just because it's a stretch fabric. You're not going to go anywhere with a universal needle. That's I tried it. Don't, don't try it. And so the sewing process started. I would recommend not skipping the instructions that come with your sewing machine, otherwise when you're threading the bobbin, the thread will end up like this. So just, just follow the instruction and the thread could look like this. So I have to admit that when it came to making the top, I had no idea what I was doing, but it did turn out pretty good. So I started out by flipping the top so that the right side would be up, and I really aligned the side of the sleeve so that the end seam of the sleeve would fall next to the side of my body essentially. L like the same way the sleeves are made, right? So the largest part of the sleeve had to be aligned with the hole that had already been prepared for the arm. And I proceeded to pin all along and that was that. I was trying on the actual crew neck, I came to the realization that I have no idea how to sew armpits. My guess is that it works a lot better if you just do one continuous seam from the sleeve all the way to the body of the shirt, but that's not what I did and it looks really clumped up and really like, kind of like there was a vacuum in my armpit, which that's not exactly the look that I was going for, but it's here. So I guess listen to professional's opinion for that.
part that is extremely underrated in the sewing process is definitely ironing. It just makes your garment look a lot more crisp than if you didn't iron it. So especially when you're hemming, it's just such a good idea to iron. And something to note is that I wanted the bottom of my top to be gathered and so that's why I insert the elastic later but you'll see a visual of it. Something that I have to note is that when making the waistband I should have taken like really like the actual length of my waist and not made it a little bit smaller because this because the clinic was already so large to begin with that when it came time for me to feed the elastic to it there was so much fabric so much excess fabric that it made it even tighter than i had anticipated and and so something that i would recommend is that when you're making the waistband make it a little bit larger or the same length of your waist just because if you don't want it uncomfortably tight and also choose an elastic that is at least two inches wide you know the, the elastics that you normally find in um, sweatpants so another thing that I have to know about feeding the elastic is that you really need to make sure that the other end of the elastic that is not being fed through is tied to the top otherwise you will lose it time and time again and you will lose your mind every single time um it has happened to me way too many times that i fed it through and then i was pulling it and then the other end just snapped and went back into into the waist of the top and it was just total despair because i have to, to just start over again and i started over three times <laughs> i'm so tired of doing this i'm so tired of doing this I've been fitting this elastic through twice and now I have to, to do it a third time. So you can imagine that my Saturday night was just great. <laughs> After that, I began the process of starting to make the cuffs of the wrist of the top. For some reason, I thought that I could make the cuff the width that I wanted them to be. It's not the case, you can't just make them the length, like the width of your actual wrist without taking into account the, the width of the top, it just doesn't work like that. Just because it will get really bunched up, it, won't look, it will not look cute, it will just be a mess, you will not want to sew this and you'll just end up crying a little bit. So um, if you're an avid sewer, you probably knew that already, but I ended up sewing it extremely wrong like this is supposed to be my sleeve and I don't really get it <laughs> I don't I really don't understand where I went wrong and that's the problem I hate this I detest this I detest this I detest this Um, after sewing and unsewing and sewing and unsewing, I finally ended up watching a video and I will link it down below that kind of taught me about how to actually make cups. And I made a mistake again where I actually sewed the seam, the side seam first and then I sewed it with the, the, the sleeves. But I should have actually sewed it, attached it to the sleeve first and then sewed the side seam just so that it would have been a lot seamless. And I'm really getting a lisp from sewing so many S's now. Like, so the sewing process is just so stressful because it just created kind of this bump right here along the seam and it's just, it's not as cute as it could have been. Another mistake that I made is that um, my seams are not aligned, not even a little bit. <laughs> And so yeah, that's just a beginner's mistake because I am very much an amateur. Take my tips about what I learned seriously, but don't take my tutorial. Don't take it as a tutorial. This is not a tutorial. This is I tried to. I did not film myself making the neckline, but if you're wondering, it is the exact same process as making the cuffs. So I really recommend watching the tutorial if you're interested in reproducing the same steps because I think it's better informed. <laughs>
So I guess now you want to hear about all my final thoughts. What I've learned is that Cora, please just use a pattern next time. And just, ugh, ugh. Um, something else that, that I would recommend is that sewing takes patience, honestly. Um, it takes a while because before a piece actually starts looking like what you want it to look like and even when you're almost done with it, it might still look very, very weird. I guess what I can say is that don't give up. Even if the piece doesn't turn out to be exactly what you wish it could be, it's still, it's still your creation. You can, still, you can probably still adjust it, you can probably bring modifications to it, add some things on, and it's just, sewing is just such a rewarding and frustrating process, like I said, but it is still worth trying and yeah. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. Please let me know what sewing ideas you'd like me to try next. I was thinking of making another loungewear set just better um, and also dyeing it in brown because everyone has been liking brown and I'll see my thoughts about that in another video. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you want me to try next. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.